This meeting is officially called to order uh, for Tuesday, April the 16th, 2024 at 3.30 p.m. Thank all of you for joining us here uh, this afternoon for this meeting. At this time, we will have our Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Attorney Holmes and our invocation by Superintendent Sirens. Join me in saying the pledge, please. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity where we can meet publicly and do the, uh, the business of our school district. We ask that you be with our board Please. and everyone in the room to help us make the wise decisions that do the, the best we can for the students of this wonderful county. Just lead in God and direct us. Forgive us of our sins and help us to always follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. <clears throat> At this time, we are ready for our presentations. Uh, we are going to start with the FHSAA Winter Academic Team Champions by Mrs. Diana Drew. Following that, we will have the Harvard Pair Study Results by Dr. Coleman and Dr. Schofield. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am pleased to be here today to um, carry on a tradition that was started some time ago, but we are, going, we are continuing that on through the year as the different um, levels of team sports happen throughout the year. So right now we are obviously in spring sports, but we haven't finished um, recognizing those students that were in winter sports that met the criteria for academic team champions. So today, we're going to recognize the academic team champions from Crescent City Junior Senior High School. And the FHSAA academic team champion recognition program honors the teamwork not only in competition, but in the classroom as well. The program recognizes teams in each of the associations sanctioned and recognized sports, naming an ac academic team champion in each classification with the highest GPA. I personally want to recognize these students for their commitment to academics as well as their athletic schedules. It's a big job for them to get up every day, do what they need to do to be prepared and be successful with school in the academic setting, and then continue that schedule into the afternoon and the evenings, and sometimes late into the night with their sports. Um, it is definitely a commitment, and we don't take that lightly, and we know that you're working hard, so hard, every day to make that happen. So today we have three teams from, from Crescent City, and as I call your name, I would like for you and your coaches to go ahead and come up so they can speak on your behalf as well. Three teams that we're recognizing, it's competitive cheer, girls weightlifting, and girls soccer. So if you guys could go ahead and come on up. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Who's speaking first? You know. Okay. Um, unfortunately, my girls cannot be here today <laughs> due to their involvement in other sports. Most of our team plays softball, and they had a game at Bingham High School today, so it's just unfortunate that it worked out. Um, we can talk about one person for sure that you all already know about, and that's Emmy Delaney, who won the you know the scholar uh, scholar award for the entire county. Um, we also have two other uh, Cambridge students that are most likely going to graduate with their Cambridge diplomas. And then we had 11 other girls that were 3.0 or higher on our team. So awesome. our girls' weightlifting team is not only strong, but they are great. Now. I'm sorry. Stand in and Rick, here you go. Outstanding. Why aren't you in the picture? You gotta watch Miss Gilliard. She'll <laughs> slip in there somewhere. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 That's it. Okay. 
Pepsi. Very good. Thank you for traveling over to be here with us today. Good afternoon. I'd like to bring up to uh, the podium Dr. Schofield, um, who heads up the STEM2 hub in Jacksonville. You have talked to her before, and she'd like to have an opportunity today to share some exciting data with you. Good deal. Thank you so much for having me back today. Um, it's very exciting to be here and to just see the incredible progression of the STEM programs here in Putnam County. Um, I would direct your attention over to the uh, slides, and I wanted to just share a little bit more about the STEM Hub. We are part of something bigger, and Putnam County, therefore, is part of something bigger. The STEM Hub is a collaborator where we bring people together from across the region, all in the various sectors, the schools, of course, the business community, informal learning areas like museums and aquariums, the wonderful place out on uh, the ocean, all these places come together along with community members and other nonprofits like Thrive Scholars. You've probably heard about some of the wonderful children who are getting opportunities to attend summer college programs to get them ready for the big leagues. They um, Also, we work with the universities and colleges, whether it's college or career. We work really hard to bring all the partners together. And when we started to work together, we were able to bring more and help start to seed the STEM programs here in Putnam County. So that that the children will have the ultimate outcome of their time spent in your schools, which is being ready for careers and having the skills and disposition so that any career is open to them. And we believe that starts with the itty bitties. So by working together with the district and under Dr. Serency's leadership and Dr. Coleman's spearheading of these programs, we've taken a data-driven systems approach to how we view the STEM programs. So we're building capacity. We have so much going on with more core classes than we had just a few years ago fabulous professional development for the teachers, as well as access to consistency in every school with the experiences that they're able to have. And you can see here, there's a beautifully designed progression that takes us from the itty bitties up through high school, where they're being offered the opportunity to explore various high wage, high demand careers that they can do right here in Putnam County. So what happens, what does all that mean when we provide these STEM education pathways and we embed them into the body of the school day and after school? So we wanted to get some outside information and we engaged with the Pear Institute out of Harvard Medical School where they have developed a survey that we administered to children as well as teachers and administrators to see what was the impact. And the PEAR study let us look at 10 indicators, critical thinking, perseverance, relationships both with adults and their peer, their engagement in STEM, and their identity. Do they see themselves in the careers? Then we looked at what they are actually doing, their career interest and knowledge, and then finally their engagement. Do they see themselves in STEM? And we found incredible things. I'm going to go back there. We found that across all 10 indicators, 
Every instant led us to statistically significant findings. So in other words, what the children are self-reporting is saying that they have come so far in their own feelings and opinions in these areas that they are on that path to those high wage, high demand careers. We also looked at the educator perceptions. And one of the things that we really care about is what they do in STEM. Are they in fact working harder, not just when they're building a robot or coding a computer, but are they working harder and trying harder when they're in math class? Is there by chance a connection to literacy? What else are we seeing? So by engaging with the Pear Institute out of Harvard Medical Center using their survey, we were able to see that the changes in skills and changes in confidence went up. And we found from the educators that yes, in fact, the teachers are seeing better attitudes towards their children's engagement with the hard work in math and reading as it's aligned to these experiences. As you're aware, in grade six, Every child in this district has a core STEM elective. So they get a STEM class every day. And so we wanted to see, was there a difference between the sixth graders who have this daily experience and everyone else? And you can see by the graphs that between the design of the program, which is carefully articulated to make sure they get certain experiences when they're little and then really double down in grade six, you can see the light purple indicates that all of the sixth grade data from doing more STEM has really shown vast improvements in those 10 areas and those 10 indicators. We then wanted to know beyond the pair study, what else could we see from these data? And since we saw how incredibly advanced the sixth graders were, we looked at their math and we noticed that from grade four to grade six as a cohort, they grew 20 points in those um, high stakes tests from the state. And I also wanted to mention of note, they have exceeded the state average. So this is just incredible growth. And we know that STEM includes coding. Coding is mathematical thinking. And they are, we saw from the data, able to apply those things in their other subjects. We then got curious about reading. In fact, uh, my board chair challenged me. He said, have you looked at reading? And I said, well, no, but I'll go ahead and take a look at reading. And when we did, um, I'll just show you that, we noticed also similarly a very steep growth curve in reading. So their interest in and the research they do in STEM classes is carrying over into those core academic areas. Further, I was curious, how are we doing with kids in level four and five in mathematics. And if you notice here in this um, chart from the state, Putnam County sixth grade students are exceeding the state in level four and five, which means that they are going even further than proficient. So it's really, um, quite profound data and it makes us just thrilled to see the impact of the STEM programs. Just a little summary, we know um, overall our graduation rates are up, attendance is up, discipline is down, and this just recaps the growth in math, reading, and the affective domain. Are they ready for these careers? Are they interested in the careers? I mentioned we're part of something bigger. We are one community of about 100 globally, and we were honored to host a convening here in May. We had over 700 people here, and um, Dr. Serency, Dr. Coleman, Michael Helms, all were part of the main presentations and the real draw as to why we had the largest attendance of any of the conferences. And just some pictures, not only 
did people come here to learn about what's going on? But we've had visitors from esteemed guests. We've had um, the district was recognized by Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple, as a pathway district, and in fact, as the first data validated pathway district. We shared that data with them and Dr. Serency's path actually inspired Steve to challenge other schools and districts to do a deep study. So people are following in your footsteps. We've been visited by um, people from Israel, Denmark, from <coughs> Kentucky, from Pennsylvania, all coming in to get a glimpse at the path that Putnam County is blazing. And I'd like to just put it in perspective because we're getting them interested and ready for these careers, but our org was formed by the business community to help accelerate readiness for the careers. So I'd like to turn it over to our board chair, David Reichert, who is also one of the founders of the STEM2 Hub. David? Thank you, Kathy, and, and thank you for having me here today. It's uh, first of all, I hope that y'all feel proud of what you've accomplished to date. Uh, it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of leadership to make significant system level process change. But I think it's just the beginning of what we're going to see. And, and to understand where we came from and how we get there, how we're going to get there and how we got to this place, I think it's really you have to keep in perspective why we're doing this. It's about creating a future for our kids. It's about making sure they get the skills they need to be successful in the workforce. And almost 10 years ago, the business community in Jacksonville, we came together and said, hey, we have to do something. The divide is getting bigger. Our students are coming out of school. They might be well educated. They might be taking tests well, but they don't have the skills they need to be successful in the workforce. And so we decided to put our own funding together and, and bring in the other business partners, bring in education and say, how do we solve this problem? Because if you looked at the data, the greatest jo job growth the largest wage growth, the greatest wage earning opportunities were all in these STEM related fields that people talk about. Yeah. So some of it was trying to get the misnomer of what is STEM. People say, oh, it's a bunch of software developers. It's not. It's more systemic that, than that. And you see that in some of the charts and the data that Dr. Schofield shared with you. So I think getting to a le an even playing field of what that really meant and the purpose for doing it was, was part of the challenge. And then realizing that we all could solve it in different ways. But at the end of the day, we knew that we had to transform education in a way so that we exposed our kids early to get the skills that they need to be successful. But some of that is not so they end up in a STEM career. It could be any career, but the things that they'll learn along the way, the way they'll learn to collaborate and work in a team environment, the way that they'll process information, solve problems, and make wise choices for their career will be the biggest beneficiaries uh, in this journey. Because what also had happened for years is kids were not choosing uh, career fields in college for say computer science or engineering or any, any, any of the high tech related fields, kids weren't choosing those fields. So clearly something was wrong. Well, we're starting to see that change now. We're starting to see that because of the exposure, it's now unlocked the doors in all kids. And I remember something Dr. Serency said years ago. He said, you know, we might be a small county and sometimes perceived limited resource. It wasn't these exact words, but you'll, you'll get the gist of it. He said, but I think our kids deserve the same thing that every other kids deserve. And I think what, what that has proven by taking that leadership and saying, I don't know the answer per se, and being maybe a little bit vulnerable into the point of we've got to figure this out because we're betting our future on it, you know, might have been the hardest thing to do, but hard things come, you know, as are, and good things come from those hard decisions and making that change happen. So I think what you're seeing today is the system is now built. The superpower becomes the teacher. And we've proven that now the, the teachers have the superpower to impact the kids in these meaningful ways. And we're going to continue to see these kids grow. And the future engineers and the, and the innovators and, and the AI gurus, all, they're all going to come out of your school system. They're all going to come out of your community. But the beauty is they don't have to leave your community anymore. Now you don't have to worry about where do they find a job. The day of we want the companies to be relocated here to our community so we can have jobs, those aren't relevant anymore. Now the real currency is the talent. So you're doing all the right things. And I commend Dr. Serency, Dr. Coleman, and Michael Helms for the work that y'all are doing, because this is amazing. Y'all should be really proud. So, but thanks for having us. And David, thank you. I just want to tell you how, how valuable a partner you have been to our district. <laughs> and, um, and as a friend, you and I have known each other for a while. And 
just the uh, the cooperation we've had with the STEM2 Hub. We could not be where we are right now without your assistance and just your belief in us. And I think it's been a, a wonderful partnership. I can't wait to see what happens in years to come. So thank you very much for being here. And, and thanks to all the board members of the STEM2 Hub. Madam Chair, do you have any? Um, I'll come out for a picture. Yeah. Did Mike have anything? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy, I don't think you uh, said anything about this. And I know Laura Francis is going to get on to me. <laughs> but um, we have tentatively, we don't, we don't have the official letter yet. Can I say that, Laura? Yes. Okay. We have tentatively <laughs> been, a, if, if I say something wrong, then I'll plead ignorance later. <laughs> but uh, we have tentatively been approved uh, for STEM accreditation for the entire district of the Putnam County School District. And once that becomes official, we will be officially the first school district in the entire United States wow. to have earned that designation. Wow. wow. So, pretty cool. <laughs> we were on a, uh, a, a Zoom conference the other day, and it, that was indicated, but we always like to have a paper in our hand to prove it. So uh, we have verbal confirmation, but we, we want written confirmation, and then we'll make an even bigger deal of it. So I think that's something that... Awesome. We all should be proud of. Mm, yeah. Awesome. And on behalf of the uh, school board, we just want to thank you for trusting and believing in us enough to think that we would follow through and get the job done with the leadership of Dr. Coleman and those that work with her and Mr. Helm. Um, we have begun something I said at the last board meeting that we set out to do, I guess, eight years ago, and that was to stop our students from leaving Putnam County to go to surrounding counties to get what we could offer. And now we find that the pendulum has shifted. They are now coming to us for what we have. And we thank you for believing in us and trusting us. And thank you, Dr. Cerency, for the vision. Thank you. Because without a vision, a people perish. That's right. I got that from out of a great book. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> we won't say where, but that's okay. Uh, I can't even program a VCR anymore, but uh, we got people <laughs> that do. You have yeah. a VCR. <laughs> well, the true beneficiaries are the kids. That's it. That's and, you know, it. graduation rates, uh, instructional rates. You know, there's there's really no not a significant correlation between a class size. If they can have 30 kids or 13 kids. It's the teaching and the material and the stuff that they're being taught and how they're being taught. But even grad rates improving like they have, I mean, that's every kid. 20 years ago, it was $300,000 more lifetime earnings. Now it's probably six hundred, seven hundred thousand. 700000 I don't know. But it's just the kids are the ones that benefit. Well, the other thing, David, I want to mention, and, and uh, Dr. Schofield did a great job. This is impacting our student achievement. Yes. I mean, it's very clear that Harvard came, at, came here and did a study on this. It's very clear with the trajectory that our kids are on because of our STEM, Absolutely. our STEM instruction. It is turning them on to reading and math, and um, I think we'll see even better things happen. Yes. Very good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you again. At this time, we <clears throat> are asking, are there any uh, public comments? All right. Don't have any. Okay, so we will move on. At this time, we... We'll ask for our consent agenda. Uh, we're going to start with you, Mrs. Pickens. Is there anything you would like to pull? No, I had a few phone calls, and I'm good. Okay. Nothing to pull. Thank you. Mr. Buckles? I met earlier today with the superintendent. I'm good. All right. Thank you. Mrs. Wagner? I have nothing to pull. Thank you. All right. Mr. Leary? Nothing to pull. All right. And I have nothing. Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. 
All right, it's been motioned by Mr. David Buckles that we approve the consent agenda as it is presented to us, and it was seconded by Mr. Phil Leary. All right, uh, are we ready to vote? All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. We are now ready to move into emergency session. We have three items that are before us. I'll make a motion. We approve the, uh, the number one uh, because it's uh, it is RFP, it's award the RFP 54007-4213 School Food Service Mechanical Services Justification Explanation Time Sensitive. Second. Motion by Mr. David Buckles that we approve uh, emergency item L1 and it was seconded by Mrs. Holly Pickens in the discussion. Hearing none, we're ready to vote. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Motion carries. Madam Chairman, I would move that we approve RFP 54007-2414, the SFS for Technology Services, uh, which our technology department, IT department, does a great job, and the recommendation is based on the time sensitivity. A second. All right. It was motioned by Mr. Phil Leary that we accept emergency item L2 uh, and second by Mrs. Linda Wagner. Any discussion? Hearing none, we're ready to vote. All in favor, let it be known by aye. Aye. Motion carries. I'll make a motion on the number three, Traveris Agreement. Uh, just a little bit of wording here, though. I was, I was really disappointed at the last meeting that we didn't get it finalized because I have, in past years, seen employees that didn't have anywhere to go and didn't want to run to the emergency room because they couldn't afford it and try to make it through a bad night or two and, and, and as a result, pass away. So I've seen a lot of bad stuff before, but I'm glad that we've got this in front of us today. And uh, I make a recommendation we approve the Traveris Agreement justification explanation time sensitive. I'll second for discussion. I just want to make sure, Mr. Holmes, you, you've read through this because that was all of our problem before. I think the language, I drafted the language that's now in uh, subparagraph one with the exception, I believe, of the highlighted four or five words there. Um, while I don't think it's my position or place to recommend or not recommend a, an agreement from a policy perspective, I do believe, believe this agreement more accurately states the intent of the document that was put before you at, the, at our last meeting. So I believe it now pretty clearly states what they're going to do for the first year for the $15,000 and the $15,000 will not be refundable. And Madam Chairman, the impetus of it is the uh, our prescription care, correct? For prescriptions. Yes, this. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, my understanding um, is is just that they are sort of <coughs> overlooking the pharmacy benefits oh, only. Okay. Any further discussion? Right now, so we we are ready to vote. I think it was Mr. Buckles that motion yes. that it was yes, all right that we approve uh, emergency item L three, and it was seconded by Mrs. Pickens with stipulation that we discussed, which we've had. Are we ready to vote? All right. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. We are now out of emergency session. And we move to item M, <coughs> unfinished business. We have unfinished business. Yes, sir. Agreement for sale and purchase of property. Yes, ma'am. So on February 13th, uh, we brought to the board an intent uh, to purchase letter from Solid Rock uh, for the uh, approximately one acre on the corner of Highway 20 and County Road 315 uh, on Interlock and High School's campus. Uh, the, the intent was to buy that property for a million dollars. Um, so the board action that day was uh, essentially to go forth and negotiate a contract 
and bring it back. Um, during that time, we, uh, we reached out to um, our attorney and also our realtor, and uh, based on some sound legal advice and some other recommendations that we received, we asked that some changes be made in the contract. Um, we are currently at an impasse on receiving those changes. So uh, the contract that you have before you today comes without a favorable recommendation. Um, here today we have Mark Spaulding, our realtor. Um, we also have rep representation from Solid Rock. Um, but I, I think the first person you should really hear from is our attorney or your attorney, Don Holmes, and he can elaborate on uh, his recommendations for, for that. Again, um, we do not uh, recommend that you accept the contract, at least in its current form, uh, based on Mr. Holmes' legal interpretation. Okay. All right. Mr. Holmes? So in your packet, or uh, at least available as one of the agenda documents, you'll see both the original contract and then an addendum that I drafted. The addendum um, was originally drafted by me, but then there were some changes made by the um, potential broker or um, developers' representatives to make it palatable to them. Um, personally, uh, there are some, in my opinion, uh, some problems with uh, with the position that they've taken and I'll explain briefly uh, I guess I'll start with the obvious and that is the property at issue is currently owned by you uh, it could not be developed for a service station slash convenience store if that's still a proper terminology use without special exceptions from the governing body of the town of Interlock and they would actually two would be required one to locate a service station within 500 feet of another service station and then the second one would be to serve alcoholic beverages should they choose to serve uh, wine I think beer might qualify without the special exception but wine would not as things stand in the interlock and that application would have to be in your name <coughs> uh, the, because you're the owner, owner of the property so as the owner you would have to apply the um, the um, developers agents have asked that um, essentially you designate them as your agents for purposes of making the application and carrying it through but the application would still be in your name um, so one um, that that's the first issue for me um, for your consideration and again as I've said earlier um, it isn't for me to make policy decisions. I just point out issues for you. The addendum that I had prepared had a clause at paragraph 10-0 that says, notwithstanding <coughs> anything else contained within the agreement for sale and purchase, seller shall not be obligated before closing or during seller's ownership of the real property to cooperate in any attempt which may be made to, by buyer to obtain permits, variances, zoning change or other regulatory license which would one allow the sale of alcoholic beverages on the real property or two allow the storage of propane on site in above ground bulk containers with a total cumulative capacity of 250 gallons or more the seller's agent struck through that meaning it would not be a part of the addendum and instead inserted the language which you see below which says seller shall sign exhibit B granting buyer authority to act as agent in submitting for permits, variances, or any other governmental approval required for buyer's intended use. However, sellers shall have no obligation to help obtain permits or permission allowing sale of alcoholic beverages on the real property or allowing storage of propane on site in above ground bulk containers with a total cumulative capacity of 250 gallons or more. So that's the change that you see there. In addition, <clears throat> um, there was a clause that, uh, a, what we call a liquidated damage clause. I uh, mean the contract that specified that if for whatever reason the school district didn't perform the contract um, you could be sued and in addition to them seeking to have a court make you sell they could also collect damages from you f because you had not um, performed I had stricken that <clears throat> um, and uh, basically said that they could sue for specific performance but that they could not um, seek liquidated damages and instead they inserted a clause that said that they could 
basically initiate legal action to recover those expenses incurred by them. I won't quote read it verbatim, but they could seek damages from you not to exceed three hundred thousand uh, dollars should you not perform. So those are problematic clauses for me. The other the other um, provisions that are in the addendum had to do with you making a, a what amounts to an identification about the uh, about the absence of contaminants on site, which we don't. To the best of my knowledge, you're not aware of any, but then you're uh, hesitated to have you making an, uh, an absolute um, guarantee that there weren't any there, mm -hmm. and, and also th that guarantee had provisions for you paying for cleanup. They did agree to take that out. So um, a as it stands, from, from my perspective, uh, you've got there are two very problematic <coughs> clauses that uh, remain in the contract. Thank you so much, uh, Attorney Holmes. All right, at this time, the board, we, we're ready to yes, discuss. Yes, we'll start with you, Mr. Leary. Thank you, uh, uh, Madam. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Oh, um, sorry. From the other. Do you want to hear from them or? Okay. Their representative. All right, okay. Yeah. All right. Hmm, thanks. And if you would just state your name and your address or who you represent. Yes, of course. Anthony Kachuk, Solid Rock Property Group, 4803 George Road, Tampa, Florida. And thank you very much for your time, and thank you for the uh, summary, uh, Mr. Holmes. Um, as it pertains to the, um, the damages clause, we would be fine removing that. Um, when we deal with private sellers, uh, that becomes an issue for us if, if, for whatever reason, the seller didn't perform the contract. We would be out <coughs> significant damages. Um, but in this instance, since it's a public body, I don't foresee that being an issue, so we would be fine removing that. Um, as it pertains to filing for permits or variances um, in your name, since you are the current property owner, we wouldn't be able to file for anything um, until we close on the property. So it would preclude us from working with FDOT or Interlochen or Putnam County to obtain permits. So that was the reason why that clause was in there. And open to any questions y'all may have but your request is that the, go the school board designate your firm as agent to as apply agent. for those permits including the right to sell alcoholic beverages and bulk store propane before closing correct with the propane we could strike that they're, they're not going to have propane or whatever on site and, and I'd be creative to, to work with any language that <coughs> that made the board comfortable so that I'll just say madam chair it is it is problematic problematic with me for a school district to apply for any alcohol. any alcohol or anything that's and right. I mean that's that's the reason why we made that request so that's kind of where we draw the line. All right, yes, sir. Um, so to put things in correct posture, I'll make a motion to deny the request for the the uh, the contract, um, and then. If we can get a second, we can discuss it. Then we can discuss it. I'll second it. All right, it's been motioned by Mr. Phil Leary that we deny the the contract, and it was seconded by Mrs. Holly Pickens uh, in the discussion. Yeah. At this point, yeah. now we will uh, discuss. Well, it, it, will there be discussion after this? Because I was the only nay vote that day, and I had my reasons, which were tied to this, but there were other reasons as well. And I still think with us in the building project that we're in, we don't know at this time with change orders what might happen with that before this process is complete in a few years. So, but, but that's just me. But anyway, I, my, my concerns at the last meeting were liquefied natural, natural gas, bringing in gasoline. Nobody would say what they're going to be, what they're going to sell with beer and alcohol. Kids going to go up there before school. I could go on and on. But... I appreciate, you know, it's a, it's a generous offer, but there's also a lot of heartfelt emotions in that place because it was a little league ball field for many, many years. Then it became an ROTC field. And, uh, you know, it, we, we've got a, a place there that is a, it's ripe for not only commercial development, but for if we have interlocal agreements at some point, uh, meetings like, like we're talking about a new one, maybe some benefit to the county we just you know we've got some options on the table but i will I, you got a motion and a second so that's my discussion really okay. I'm compl I'm good. so thank you madam chairman um after that meeting and um 
you know, hearing you know, Mr. Buckle's concerns, I, you know, I went out to Interlarkin and, and walked the property and everything, <laughs> and um, then looked at the land uses around it and some of the other things, and, and both as a professional land use planner and a former county planning director, I realized this is not the site for that intensive of a commercial uh, land use. And so the, it, it, even if, you know, if there was a rezoning, I, I, I doubt very seriously that the town of Interlarkin would approve it. So um, I think it's, um, again, you know, a gracious offer, but uh, uh, something that just won't work there. Thank you. All righty. Any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, are we ready to vote? And we remember the motion that was on the floor to deny, and it was second by Mrs. Pickens. All right, all in favor to deny, let it be known by aye. 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 It was unanimous. Well, thank you for your cooperation. Yeah. Thank you for coming. <coughs> Mr. Spaulding. Yeah. Madam Chair, uh, board members, Mark Spaulding, uh, 3400 Crow Avenue. I just wanted to say, because I do represent y'all in uh, the sale of other properties and hopefully properties in the future, and maybe even this property. You're the owner of this property. You're the owner of all the properties. If there's a use that you don't want, you need to think ahead, be thinking now, and you can deed restrict it. That deed restrict it can be forever. It can be for as long as there's a school next door. It can do whatever you want to do. And so just try to head off some issues in the future. I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I, I like that advice. Yeah. Okay. I actually taught him in school. <laughs> you taught him that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't <laughs> teach him that. Okay. He, he wasn't a good student. <laughs> <laughs> Great student. Okay. At this time, we are now ready for our reports from the board members. Uh, Mr. Leary, we're going to go ahead and start with you. Well, I was hoping we'd start with Miss Pickens because she always does such a fantastic job of talking about all the events that we attended, <laughs> like the Goodwill ceremony and you know, the the the, uh, the honors, the graduates uh, that we did. Um, just some fantastic uh, opportunities for us personally to see uh, the achievements of the students um, all around in, in our district and and the fantastic work that our teachers and administrators and support staff and bus drivers and and cafeteria workers custodians are all doing working together yes. you know to to make um a, a very positive experience and we saw earlier today some of the demographics uh for our students um other than that i did have some additional questions about the or concerns about the contract which um uh, i think will be addressed in the future and um I'm looking forward to uh, more uh, more opportunities to, uh, we've got a number of invitations for future events and looking forward to attending those as we wind down the school year. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Wagner. Well, I would uh, I definitely agree. The award ceremonies were just wonderful. Um, and it's not just what I'm seeing when I go to these is number one the pride from the students themselves and and the fact that they are getting recognized I think even from a young age is just so important that positive reinforcement when you when you achieve so that's one part of it but I also noticed all the the teachers and and staff and the pride that they're showing they're coming to these events and they're supporting these children um, after hours for these uh, for these functions that recognize them for achievement and it's just they're they're just really enjoyable and it's great to see um, these students that are just uh, very very high achievers um, I was also in in our uh, consent agenda noticed there's a lot of very exciting uh, travel coming up and I'm kind of I was reading through them and I was getting excited for the kids for some of these uh, some of these trips that they're going to be taking so I know it's getting to be that time of year the graduations coming up and and all of that but some of these trips are, are both educational and fun and hope everyone stays safe and enjoys them tremendously um, and then I was just going to say that I had um, my first luncheon that I had talked about before I went to Melrose Elementary and 
was not knowing what to expect if any I was reaching out to teachers for those that didn't hear it before teachers and employees just to you know show that I'm there that type of um, outreach and I just had a wonderful time I spent two hours there and I was not just speaking with teachers but uh, just employees anyone that came up and said what are you doing here um, <laughs> which there was a couple and one lady in particular I just wanted to mention because she made my entire day maybe my week um, her name was Gloria and she works I don't know her capacity what her job is but she's she was out in the lunchroom area and she had a broom and was making sure everything stayed clean the whole time and she went by a student that was sitting with a few friends and he was just kind of quiet and she said something to him like how are you today and he mumbled something and I'm a ways away I couldn't hear it all but she went oh and a few minutes later she walked over to the teacher that was supervising and told her something and that teacher came over and stopped all conversation with all of the classes that were out there and announced that it was Matthew's birthday that day Aww. and this she had everyone out there singing uh, to this child and just to just the the whole the whole atmosphere there was of such love they they sang to him and afterwards I, I counted six different students uh, male and female go up to this this child and hug him um, one several times and um, <laughs> so uh -oh. but She's I just crushing. want I just wanted to point out that it doesn't matter your role it doesn't matter what you're doing at that moment or whether it's in your job description this lady saw a moment that this it was this child's birthday he wasn't necessary that might have been the only recognition he he got we don't know um, I don't know the the child but the the look on his face was just priceless. yes it was priceless and I just wanted to give a shout out to her because she did one little thing and that could have it, it, it was very important to that child and just those little things matter uh, in teaching and outside of education yes. just it really impressed me that she thought to do that and took those steps so that's all I have awesome. thank you so much mr. Buckles uh, well miss Gilliard <clears throat> thank you um, it is that time of year when every it looks like all student activities are happening in just everywhere and I'm so thankful that our department with uh, social media has been posting the athletic competition and the results and the many fine award ceremonies that we're having and the kids that are just excelling and doing great I mean you're gonna you're gonna always in an organization this size you're gonna have you're gonna have some problems but as we heard today, even you know, in relation to what we've achieved with the STEM, and I say we've achieved on behalf of the children, the opportunities they have to go on and excel, and and to you know, you look at the state averages and the scores. It it is about the kids. Everything we do really is is about teaching and learning. If it doesn't relate to instruction and hugging that child's neck, then we're not doing our job. And you know, we we make decisions here that that are so that seem so far away from where the kids are but it's really not it's all interconnected and uh, I just the only complaint I would have if I had one was that in the catfish festival parade you and miss uh, Pickens were really giving out so much candy that you couldn't keep up with the truck <laughs> you t the men were riding they made us walk yeah, I was that's, telling everybody y'all yeah, coming that was yeah. like the uh that's, the that was the deal that was a that was a very wonderful uh well parade and I, and I don't Goodness. I don't get to all the award ceremony because I was at a ball game that the other night when you had one and I missed one but I try to make as many as I can and but I got grandkids playing and kids coaching and you know it's something to watch grandchildren coaching so anyway I'm done thank you Miss Buckles Mrs. Pickens um, well thank you I was gonna mention the the parade we had um, I think Miss Wagner couldn't be there but we did have um, four members and we had a I um, oh, I, it was really hard to keep up with the truck I do believe that <laughs> mr. Buckles was going a little bit fast um, Bill kept tapping the hood tell me to go faster but it was a, a a wonderful parade and a wonderful festival and um, you know we 
Rotary of Crescent City, I say that we just because, you know, if your husband is Rotarian, then you might as well be a Rotarian. Um, but I think the important thing is not to lose sight of the fact that that whole process and all those volunteers, tons of volunteers, um, and a lot of students um, receive an, at least a year worth of education after school. And the whole intent of, of the scholarships at the very beginning was to at least give that student that didn't, you know, maybe didn't have the highest grades or, or what, and maybe couldn't afford it, at least give them the opportunity and then see what would happen after a year. And um, so kudos to the Rotary Club for pulling it off and, and giving millions of dollars to our students to go to um, secondary scholarships. Um, the Take Stock was a, a great dinner and um, an award ceremony, and uh, I kind of closed my eyes thinking, you know, when, when's my mentee? Two years. She's coming through in two years, and I just, I think I'm going to be as excited as my own children. I mean, it's, it's going to be quite an achievement. Um, Ms. Hansford was in Crescent City yesterday at the Cube, South Putnam Church, with a lot of different organizations, but promoting that. And I know that if you were at the dinner, you saw that, that the majority of those students are from Crescent City. So they're taking advantage of a great opportunity for prepaid two years of schooling. Um, and then last night I went to the Cambridge um, Awards Ceremony at Miller Intermediate. It was for Crescent City Junior Senior High School. They recognized the sixth graders that had been approved to come into the program as seventh graders. And then they recognized the seventh and through on. Um, but the, the number of seniors, uh, and Emmy Delaney, you know, she's, she's just a fabulous representative of Crescent City, and she's the child of two Crescent City graduates. So it's, you know, it's kind of a home thing. Um, but six earned their ACE diplomas, and at least 17 could possibly have their ACE diplomas if they pass just one or two exams. So that's a great thing. And um, then also, I've been, you know, I kind of get on Facebook, I kind of don't, but I get on there to look at all the achievements of our students because the district does such a wonderful job of, of you know, all the industry certifications, um, welding, and I'm sure there's other ones coming up, Allied Health, and um, so many people look, don't, they just don't realize the number of CTE programs that we have mm -hmm. and how we really really are doing a great job trying to to get our kids to be able to either compete in the workforce or go on to school um, and so with that that's all I have thank you and that's what we're in the business of doing and we have been fortunate enough blessed enough that we have individuals on this board that are concerned about our, our children and and their children, you know, just to say you're a grandparent, you automatically care is not necessarily the case. But when you go and support, it is there, the happy birthday. Just that is worth any gift that that kid could have received, having his peers to tell him or her happy birthday. And so, as Mr. Buckle stated, uh, things are winding down. As Mrs. Wagner said, proms are coming, um, graduations. Uh, reward ceremonies and all of these other things are coming and we just have to keep our children in mind and and pray that they practice the safety that that the parents I know tell them about continuously all righty uh, mr. Mike McKinley uh, aka the key man for, for the school district uh, he is retiring after 30 years and 11 months and I'm just only mentioning him because he wasn't here today for the uh, uh, human resource center I mean yes human resource area to do what they do because I just love the way they do it now bringing them forward so if Mike is listening or if some of his friends are listening uh, he can boast about his name was mentioned 
all righty. And to STEM too, again, we can't say enough for what they are doing for our students. Again, Mr. Buckle said it best, that's what we're in the business for. That's what it's about. All the other things, the secondary, primary are our students. And the final thing I want to mention, I know my friends say I don't mention him enough, and every now and again he'll come up and nudge me, and he'll say things like, I'm doing a great job. <laughs> All right. That's, uh, he, he knows who I'm talking about. I read the emergency operations plan, and I didn't have to read it verbatim because it is long, but it, when you've been in it as long as we have, you know some of the things, so we look for the red. But one of the things that stuck out as I kept reading it, it kept going over and over again was, remember, if you can see the assailant, the assailant can see you. So, and and uh, I just, I, I love what we're doing, preparing our students, making sure that we keep them safe and doing the things that we know to do to, to make sure that every boy and girl that get on that bus in the morning or dropped off by their parents get to go home that afternoon. And with that said, we'll move to you, Attorney Holmes. I have nothing. All righty. You did a whole lot for us earlier, <laughs> so we'll let you pass. Thanks. Mr. Superintendent. Yeah, and thanks for that a clarification on the contract. I think, you know, we definitely need to go through that. You went through it and, uh, you know, it didn't meet our expectations, but thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Very helpful. I um, have a number of things here, and first of all, if I can find it here, Top Scholar Award. We had that the other night. Appreciate y'all coming. 115 students, and Emmy Delaney was uh, won the Webb Award, and there was a great keynote given by Dr. Tom Hunter, and um, who was a 1961 graduate of Palaka Senior High School. So it was really impactful for him to come up and say, hey, you know, with his his background is spectacular and for him to come from our county really is a great you know testament uh, we had the Cambridge Awards last night for Crescent City Junior Senior High School and I'm just very proud of what's happened in Crescent City as you know about what four or five years ago we actually expanded our Cambridge to the South Putnam area so that those children would not have to drive 40 miles to go to a Cambridge school and look how they're flourishing and I'm, I'm just so proud of them Today, our principals all came together in this very room and actually had a, a, a data chat, data review. And um, I like the format, Jonathan, that was done. They actually not only shared their data, they actually presented to their colleagues what their plan is for improving it. And I thought it was a great discussion. We've done that for years, but we've improved every time. And it's such a collaborative effort where, you know, not only is one school getting better we're all getting better because we share with each other uh next tuesday the 23rd at 6 p.m at cl overturf district center we're having our uh, nightly superintendent's community engagement session and that's where all family and community members are invited to come out i believe it'll be in the cafeteria and just an opportunity where we can share a lot of our data and some of the programming that we're doing and, and this is an opportunity for them to ask us questions. So I would encourage people to come out and, you know, it's a good way we can interact with the community. I want to welcome on board Zach, William, Zach Simmons. Zach Simmons right here. Zach, raise your hand. Zach is our new um, purchasing specialist. And actually uh, his, his mom, if you look familiar, actually teaches at Browning Pierce. But uh, he's, he's doing a spectacular job. And, he set the ground running and is already putting together some RFPs for us. And things are about to get really busy when all this purchasing for construction takes place. Zach might rethink whether this is a good place to come to. <laughs> <laughs> I say that tongue in cheek. So, uh, Susan wanted me to tell you that the activity calendar was just shared with you. Uh, Y'all were talking oh, about good. different events. We want to make sure that you're aware of all the events between now and graduation. And as soon as I leave this meeting, I'm heading back to Crescent City tonight. There's a music concert at the high school, so I'll be attending that. And finally, uh, I was communicating with my daughter on, offline here, but they are having, if you realize or remember, at the fair, there was a, a trailer full of hogs that were not allowed to be uh, shown at the fair. And there were some issues about some of the health of the hogs, and they do a great job just making sure that you know, the, the hogs are in good health before they're shown and before they're marketed there. 
So with that said, uh, Interlochen High School is going to have their own hog sale. And I want to announce that. It's going to be on May the 4th. May the 4th be with you that day. <laughs> at 10 a.m. at the Interlochen Junior Senior High School Ag Farm. And uh, I'm not going to mention I have two grandkids that have hogs there, yeah. but I do. And, uh, <laughs> and there are other children that have spent a lot of time and effort and resources to raise their hogs. So I just want to announce that publicly. Y'all are welcome to come. They welcome add-ons if you want to do that, add-on to whatever they're, they're sold. So these kids are uh, taking this money and investing, you know, in uh, future hog sales or investing in their education. So it's a great opportunity to reward our kids who have worked so hard. So back to you, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I don't have that answer right off the bat, but I can sure find out. Yep. Okay. But, uh, um, thank you. Yes, Dr. ma'am. Dr. Cernsey, after the music, you could come watch my rec volleyball team just down the street at the Cube. We start at 730. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> it's 145 girls oh, wow. participating in volleyball in South Putnam. Oh, wow. That is great. Well, if you play volleyball like you hand out candy, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's great. Is Good things are happening. Else come before? Not. Thank you, board. Ooh.